1900, three men on a lonely isle off the western coast of Scotland stationed there to man a lighthouse seated at the highest point of the tiny island. December 26th, a ship carrying workers sent to relieve the staff at the isolated lighthouse would arrive on the rock. Upon their arrival at the landing platform, they were concerned when no one from the lighthouse staff was there to meet them. The visitors ascended a steep trail of stairs from the platform to the lighthouse above. There they would find no trace of the three experienced workers stationed at Elon Moor. The lighthouse's log left behind a few puzzling clues. The second assistant, Thomas Marshall, had penned the final three entries. December 12th, Thomas wrote that a powerful storm had hit the island. With winds and gusts so horrid, the men of the island were terrified for their lives. December 13th, the second assistant wrote that the violent storm was still raging. The three men spent what they believed to be their last moments on earth huddled in prayer inside the battered lighthouse. December 15th, on the final entry found in the logbook, Thomas Marshall only wrote, Storm ended, sea calm, God is over all. No one knew what to make of the journal entries. The missing men on Elon Moor had been clearly afraid of being swept from the island by the raging storm, yet they were bunkered in a newly built lighthouse that stood a hundred feet plus above sea level. And no other locals in the vicinity had experienced any severe weather whatsoever between December 12th and December 15th. Other clues would be discovered, but they would only add to the mystery of the missing lighthouse staff. Theories to what had happened at Elon Moor would be raised. Stories of giant freak waves which swept the men from the island were offered as answers. Others suggested supernatural forces were behind the disappearances. The lighthouse upon Elon Moor stands dutifully atop the rock over 100 years later. The truth of what happened to the men that were lost there those many years ago is still shrouded in mystery to this day. A group of secluded islands, known as the Flannan Islands, are located 65 miles off the northwest coast of Scotland. The islands are named after an Irish preacher who would build a Celtic chapel upon the largest of them, known as Elan Moor, in the 7th century. Eventually, the Celtic church would decline and the chapel at Elan Moor would be abandoned. Sheep herders were some of the few visitors to the island in the following centuries. The shepherds were frightened of the isle, believing it to be inhabited by supernatural beings such as fairies and evil spirits. It was also said that humongous predatory birds would patrol the skies above Elan Moor. It was believed this island belonged to the little people that lived there. Visitors that did not observe their rules were said to risk becoming one of many victims who had gone missing. When night began to fall, sheep herders would retreat from Elan Moor, fearing the spirits that would haunt the darkness there. It is within these legends Elan Moor stood uninhabited by man for over 10 centuries until in 1895 construction of the Flannan Islands lighthouse would begin. The lighthouse was placed at the highest point on the small island at nearly 100 feet above sea level. Despite setbacks, the Flannan Islands Lighthouse would be completed in 1899. The lighthouse stood 75 feet tall, with reinforced walls built to withstand powerful storms. The light from the Flannan Islands Lighthouse could be seen up to 25 miles away. It was staffed by a crew of three men at all times. Today, most lighthouses are automated and require no one to stand vigil full time to make certain they are running properly. In the days before automation, the men who attended a lighthouse were required to spend weeks at a time isolated from civilization and away from their families. The keepers sent to Elon Moor were inhabitants of a village on the mainland who were sent out to oversee the lighthouse in 28-day rotations. Very few visitors would arrive on the island, so once an attendant had arrived at the station, they were stuck there and could not leave until the relief crew arrived after 28 days. Elon Moor is known for the swirling waters that churn around its rocky shores. Winds, waves, and sea sprites battered the island constantly. Isolation and incessant weather weren't the only difficulties lighthouse keepers faced. The lighthouse staff were confined to close quarters with each other throughout their stay on the island. Such proximity would often cause friction between the lighthouse staff. All things considered, not many men were cut out for life as a lighthouse keeper, and turnover was not uncommon among the lighthouse staff. The primary responsibility of the lighthouse staff was to keep the light on at all hours of the night. Allowing the beacon to go out was referred to as standing the light. Standing the light was the greatest sin a lighthouse keeper could commit and was typically grounds for dismissal. In the winter of 1900, three men were attending the lighthouse on Elan Moor. James Duckett, 43 years old, 
Donald MacArthur, 40 years old, and Thomas Marshall, 28 years old. Duckett had 22 years of experience as a lighthouse keeper and was the principal in charge at the lighthouse. Marshall, the second in command, was a huge man, a bachelor who had worked as keeper for five years. The third man, MacArthur, was an army veteran and was a substitute attendee with not much experience. He had been stuck on the island for three months, working as a replacement at the time, and was known for being a tough man with a fiery temper. On December 15th, a ship originating from Philadelphia was passing through nearby waters of the Flannan Islands in the North Atlantic. The captain of the ship knew that there should have been a visible lighthouse from his location, but he was unable to spot a light coming from Elon Moore. The captain made a note that he would report that the lighthouse was not operating to the lighthouse board when he arrived in Scotland, but his ship would crash into rocks off the shores of the Flannan Islands and nearly sink. Bad weather would hit the region on the 16th of December. The ship with the relief staff was meant to leave that day, but the weather delayed the replacement crew by 10 more days. On December 26th, the ship carrying relief lighthouse keepers arrived off the shore of Elon Moore. The ship crew was disturbed to see that none of the keepers on Elon Moore were waiting for the visiting ship, as was standard procedure. They fired a signal rocket and sounded a horn to alert the staff at the lighthouse of their arrival, but after 30 minutes, no one came to the landing stage. Believing the staff at the lighthouse may have been struck by illness, a rowboat was sent to the landing platform at Elon Moore. A relief lighthouse attendee named Joseph Moore ascended the steep steps from the landing stage and approached the lighthouse. As he climbed the long set of slippery stone stairs, he claimed to have a feeling of dread overcome him. The fence in the lighthouse had a gate, which was closed at the time. Moore entered the gate, and upon approaching the lighthouse station, he saw three large blackbirds perched on the tower. They swiftly flew away as he started towards the station door. The superstitious Moore took the sign as a bad omen. Moore would find the lighthouse unlocked. Upon entering, he would notice everything was clean and in its place. He soon realized something was very wrong as he searched the empty station for the crew, but there was no sign of life to be found. Knowing something had gone very wrong, Moore fled from the lighthouse and raced down the stairs, rowing back out to the ship that was waiting for him off the island's coast. There he explained to the captain and crew that something horrible must have taken place, and that there was no sign of the three lighthouse keepers. The captain sent Moore and two other crewmen back to the island to search its entirety, to see if they could find any signs of the men. The small rock was scoured, but no signs of them were discovered. After looking over the lighthouse again, it was noticed that almost everything was in its place. The entire station was clean and appeared to be well maintained. The only thing out of place were two missing set of outdoor gear, including an oilskin coat and sea boots that belonged to the principal and his second in command. Only the gear belonging to the substitute worker, Donald MacArthur, remained on its peg. Evidence of the power of the storms that hit Elon Moore was also discovered when the men would know that the iron railings placed along the trolley rail had been partially pulled from their concrete roots and broken off in several locations. The lighthouse logbook was looked over, and although there is some dispute over what was written there, it is widely believed that the last entry came midday on December 15th. The logbook would later go missing, and remains so to this day. In 1920, an American magazine published the following as the final entries which were written by 2nd Command Thomas Marshall. December 12th, Gale, north by northwest, sea lashed to fury, stormbound. 9 p.m., never seen such a storm, everything ship shape, duck irritable. 12 p.m., storm still raging, wind steady, stormbound. Cannot go out, ship past sounding foghorn. Could see lights of cabins, duck it quiet, MacArthur crying. December 13th, storm continued through night, wind shifted west by north, duck it quiet, MacArthur praying. 12 noon, gray daylight, me, duck it, and MacArthur praying. December 15th, 1 p.m., storm ended, sea calm, God is over all. Strangely, there had been no such storm at the time, according to other people in the area. The bad weather that had delayed the relief staff to the lighthouse would not arrive until December 16th. The cryptic last entry would leave some puzzled as well. If the sea was calm and the storm was finished, what could have been behind the men's disappearance? The final sentence, God is over all, would be the last foreboding words the doomed keepers would leave behind. The superintendent of the lighthouse would arrive later to investigate further. He would discover that a life buoy was missing from the western landing. He stated that the ropes that held the life buoy from atop the island at 110 feet above sea level had been torn by the force of the sea. Having known and hired all three of the missing men, the superintendent was quite troubled by the log entries which described the state of these experienced workers. He could not imagine the likes of a storm that would reduce the crew of experienced seamen stationed in the reinforced lighthouse over 100 feet above sea level to tears and prayers of desperation. Police would never perform an investigation into the missing lighthouse keepers. 
The superintendent's own investigation was the only thorough attempt made to discover what had happened. The superintendent believed that at some point all three men had left the lighthouse, yet MacArthur had apparently left the station without donning his coat and boots. The superintendent would go back to the landing platform and there he noticed that there were ropes thrown across nearby rocks. These ropes held a storage crate that was lifted by a crane which stood atop the island high above the platform. He surmised that the crate had come loose and the men tried to retrieve it. He put forth that while doing so a giant freak wave came and washed the men into the sea. This is the theory he put forth as the most likely cause behind the men's disappearance and he included it in his official report to the Northern Lighthouse Board. Although this explanation seemed to make sense to the superintendent, others still had their doubts. A wave would have had to been over 100 feet tall to wash the first man off the rock, and then a second freak wave must have come to blow the third man, who was trying to save them, off the island as well. It was unlikely to many that an experienced group of men could be taken off guard by a rogue wave, having dealt with such elements many times before. If the keepers had been washed into the sea, people wondered why their bodies had never been washed ashore. Others questioned what had caused MacArthur to leave the station in the middle of December without his gear. Doubt in the official theory led people to come up with alternative ideas as to what caused the men to vanish. Some believe the staff may have been poisoned by mercury, which lighthouse beacons would float in at the time. Mercury poison could lead one to go mad, having done so to other lighthouse keepers in that era. It was surmised that one or multiple of the staff had gone mad from the mercury, which ultimately led to their demise. Others looked to MacArthur, who was there as a substitute, as a source of the disappearance. MacArthur was known for his temper, being a drinker and something of a brawler, being at the bottom of the hierarchy at the lighthouse, and having been stuck on the island as a substitute away from his family for three months may have pushed the man to his brink. Some believe he eventually exploded in rage, murdering the other men there in a fit of violence before eventually killing himself. The replacement worker who was first on the scene, Joseph Moore, was greatly agitated by the event. Being a superstitious man, he believed that construction of the lighthouse had disturbed the sanctity of graves of the dead long buried there, and in doing so, had induced their wrath. He had carried this belief with him prior to discovering that his co-workers had gone missing. Because there was no one else to man the lighthouse immediately after the incident, the troubled Moore was forced to man the station. The frightened lighthouse keeper proved to be mentally unable to handle his assignment. He was eventually relieved from his post and would never return to Leon Moore again fearing that the disturbed spirits there were behind the disappearance of his co-workers at the lighthouse. Other paranormal theories, such as abduction by the fairy folk that were believed to inhabit the island, were also bandied by some. Some people even suggested that aliens could have taken the keepers from the station. A more mundane theory is that the men simply joined the crew of a passing ship to leave their lives as lighthouse keepers behind. The mysterious disappearances at Leah Moore would not be the end of the story. The ship originating from Philadelphia that initially discovered the lighthouse's beacon was not lit would survive nearly sinking that month, only to later disappear in the northern Atlantic, not far from the Flannan Islands. No wreckage or other clues originating from the ship were ever discovered. In the years following the disappearance of the lighthouse keepers, others stationed there would claim to hear disembodied voices calling out the names of the missing men. In the 1930s, the principal in charge of the lighthouse on Elon Moore would go mad. The staff there would be forced to tie the crazed keeper to his bed until support would arrive and take him back to the mainland. In 1971, the lighthouse at Elon Moore would be automated. Once again, man would leave the rocky island off the coast of Scotland, just as they had back in the 7th century. Today, outside of a maintenance crew that periodically checks the lighthouse and the rare summer tours to the island, Leon Moore sits uninhabited. The mystery of the missing lighthouse keepers has become part of the lore from another time. Their unsolved fate woven into the fabric of a mystical past filled with stories of spirits, fairies, and the unpredictable power of the sea.